Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 of the May 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it's a cooperatives question, but they're asking us to do a balance sheet, right? The Pig Farmers Cooperative has a membership of 100 farmers. Each member has 15,000 shares at a price of a dollar per share. Remember that it's going to come in handy later. The balances on the books of the cooperative on September 30th, 08 were as follows. So I do apologize, but somebody clearly ticked up on my paper and that's what I have right now. Okay, so we have a bunch of things here. Now, again, let me just show you what they're asking for. So for 17 marks, prepare the classified balance sheet in vertical style of the Pig Farmers Cooperative as at September 30th, 2008. Okay, I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to kind of zoom in on these balances. So take a pause if you want. Read through everything and decide where you're going to put what. And then I'll, I'll take a stab at it, right? Okay, did you pause? You took a read? Ready for my take on it? Okay. So, of course, don't forget to head up your statement properly. Name of the entity, name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. Now, I'm going to do this balance sheet two ways. I like to do net assets, which is assets minus liabilities on top, in order of permanence and then capital below. But other people also like to do assets only on top and then capital plus liabilities below. So I'm going to show you both ways. So let's get to that. So let's start off with the non-current assets. So we have debtors, inventory, feeding supplies, net book value of equipment, right? That's 200,000. But we have long-term investments in other cooperatives. We have net book value of motor vehicles and farmland and buildings. Okay, so I'm going to put the farmland and buildings first because I feel that's the most permanent, followed by the investments in other cooperatives. Then I'm going to put the equipment and then the motor vehicles. So I'm going to take a subtotal here. If you disagree with the order, let me know what order you think it should be in, in the comment section below. Now, current assets. Okay, debtors for sure. Inventory of feeding supplies is stock or inventory. That's supposed to be there. These unpaid amounts, those are liabilities. Provision for bad debts has to be subtracted from debtors. Interest on investments outstanding. Yes, that's like a crude revenue. Uh, cash and bank. That's it. So let's go. So we have the inventory of feeding supplies, the debtors minus the provision, the accrued interest on investments and bank and cash, giving us a subtotal of 253.850. Adding to non-current assets to get a total assets figure of $1.78435 million. Now we have non-current liabilities. What is that? Well, we have a mortgage of 70,000, so that's going to go there. Only one non-current liability. Current liabilities. So we have these unpaid amounts, mortgage interest, rent, telephone, and members' dividend. And then we also have further down creditors. Now, I'm going to put those items in here. Creditors, the accrued expenses, I'm putting those in, and I'm putting the dividends separately. Right Now, you could have listed out all four things separately. You could have condensed them into one. I just prefer to have the dividend payable shown separately because it's not an expense. All right, that's just my preference. But again, you could have listed out each one separately. Usually, however, expenses should be condensed. Accrued expenses should be condensed into one line item. Now, we're going to add up the current liabilities to get 184,350. We're going to add that to the non-current liabilities, 254,350, and subtract that from total assets. Now, that's going to give us net assets of 153, 1.53 million. But net assets has to be financed by capital and reserves. So remember I said that opening paragraph had something that would be useful. We have 100 members who each have 15,000 shares at a dollar each. So the value of share capital would be 100 by 15,000 by 1. So that's going to give us right, 1.5 million. And don't forget the last item in that list of balances was a general reserve of $30,000. So that's going to go there. And guess what? 1.5 million plus 30,000 is... 1,530,000 and the total for share capital and reserves matches the net asset figure and your balance sheet balances. Now, like I said, I'm going to show you this in an alternative presentation. So give me one sec. I'm going to shift this on the left hand side and I'm going to put the alternative thing on the right hand side. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the entire balance sheet from scratch again. I'm just going to start populating the items, right? Um, so non-current assets first, that's your subtotal. Current assets next, that's your subtotal there. 
right? Now, of course, if you wanted to present it differently, like you wanted to put these items in the, co in the middle column and use debtors minus provision and have net, re net, net receivables, net debtors, that's fine, right? I just went with this particular format because I thought it was more convenient to how I was laying out stuff. So you have total assets. Now below here, you're going to show your share capital reserves and liabilities. So you have your share capital, you have your general reserve, right? So for total capital and reserves. And then we're just going to pull the non-current liabilities there, the current liabilities there. And then we are going to add those together to get total liabilities, which we will add to the share capital and reserves to get total capital and liabilities. And we will notice the total for capital and liabilities matches the total assets. Your balance sheet balances, right? Now, we had a couple other items here. It said identify the information that should be used to determine whether the cooperative is in a position to meet its current liabilities. Right. So I believe they were, they were talking about, <clears throat> sorry, the like the liquidity, which is measured as we saw in a previous question on this exact paper, the question six, the current ratio. So you can look at your current assets relative to your current liabilities. So we have that here. We have 253,850 of current assets and 184,350 of current liabilities. So we can, we can cover that. So we can look at the liquidity, the current assets versus current liabilities. Now there was a, the last part says, determine the rate at which dividend is paid, assuming that the dividend owing is for one year. Okay, so the dividend owing is $105,000, right? And we're gonna divide that by the total value of share capital, which is 1.5 million. And that's going to give us a 7% dividend, right? Now, alternatively, you can take the 105 as in the dividend amount and divide by the number of shares to get a per share dividend, which in this case is $7 per share. But I feel the dividend rate, which is the 7%, is the one they were asking for, right? But again, either one of these should suffice. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 7 from the May 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PA handouts. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.